Welcome to Simple Kicking with your host, James Harrison. Austin McNamara was the starting punter in 2019 for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. As a true freshman, he was selected to the All-Big 12 team and the USA Today Freshman All-America team. Dick Vitale would call him a diaper dandy because he outperformed his peers who were three to four years older than him. Here's some quick stats. He averaged 45.1 yards per punt when 40 is really good for a senior. He also allowed 47 return yards, which means punt returners don't like him because they did not play much against him. Also, he had 26 punts inside the 20-yard line. 26, which was more than any other true freshman punter. Furthermore, half of his games were in Lubbock, Texas, where the wind gusts are so strong that the Llano Estacado, which is the area surrounding the campus, is littered with wind turbines. That means he punts in difficult conditions. Look, the stats don't tell the whole story, and that's why this conversation has two segments. The first part of the McNamara series is about the father-son connection between Austin and his dad, Brian. Since this conversation occurred around Father's Day, I'm hitting you, Brian, with the first question. You've raised a fine young man and an awesome punter. How are you proud of what you have done as a father? Well, uh, you know, I've always um, taken a lot of pride in the fact that uh, I've been to every one of uh, football, every football game Austin's ever played in. Um, during his high school years, I was privileged enough to be on the sidelines with him for all of his games. Uh, but when he went to Texas Tech and I'm still back home in Arizona coaching football, um, I've always, I still make it a priority to make every one of his games. So mom and I traveled every one of his, his games last season. And sometimes that meant I had to miss my high school game on Friday night to catch a plane to get, to get wherever Austin was at. Or I'd fly out early Saturday morning so I'd go to the game, the high school game the night before. It sounds like even if you have a game on Friday night, you'll forego if the travel schedules are conflicting. Is, is that right? Yep, you're only a, you're only a dad once. This is a, you only get one chance at this uh, to to be a parent of a of a college football player, and I'm not going to miss a single a single minute if I can help it. The seasons go by really really quick, so that totally makes sense. Austin, on your end, do you know when dads come in? I mean, you're so tight knit. I mean, can you smell dad in the stands? Yeah, um, I I usually can. They're usually there pretty early because um, in warm ups, obviously no one's there to watch kickers and punters warm up. So he's always there um, with my mom or grandparents or whoever is there with them. Um, they're usually like pretty close to the field, um, so I can always go um, and say hi to them, and and they can always um, you know watch me warm up and, and kick and kind of it kind of helps me um, personally just like kind of feel more comfortable because obviously I'm used to them being there um for my high school games because obviously i you know live there and stuff but now that we're in different states and stuff um seeing them there kind of helps me calm down a little bit because you know game days can be <clears throat> sometimes they can be a little you know uh, hectic and and crazy um with the environment and everything so it's been really cool to have them there and i always try and you know see them or at least wave or acknowledge that they're there so it's been cool all right, so do you guys have any, like, pregame rituals? Is there any kind of secret handshake that we should know about? Yeah, I mean, um, it's kind of just like a, you know, hey, and um, kind of just, uh, yeah, peace, pretty much it. <laughs> and basically, like, also, um, like, they just kind of talk about, like, I'll either tell them um, some things I'm trying to work on that game, like, you know, what's our game plan going into it, not without giving too much away, obviously, um, and kind of just telling them what I'm, what I'm trying to do this game, and they can, and they can look for that and, and try and uh, try and help me with that. So it's pretty, it's pretty so, brief. So, yeah. So James, oftentimes we get there early enough on Friday nights, wherever we are, Kansas, West Virginia, Lubbock, where we visit with him in the hotel. So we're able to sit and chat with him for a while, to the team hotel the night before the game. But on Saturdays, um, we don't expect really anything from Austin. Uh, we may wave to him, but we know this is a business trip. And it's time for him to get to work and do his thing. So we leave him alone until after the game. Then we'll give him a big hug. There's no doubt that college football is a business trip. But it's super cool that, like, mom and dad and grandparents come to the game. Yeah, 100%. Every, every week. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of kickers and punters out there who are being recruited, it's really difficult to figure out, okay, which school do I want to go to? 
did proximity to home play a role in how you chose the school? Um, as far as like close to home, I think that was one of um, that was one of my main um, points. I guess I didn't want to be um, too far. I guess to where it was like really uncomfortable um, at the beginning, but also um, so that my family could travel and watch me play. Um, and that was the biggest. And my friends, so many friends. Um, that was kind of the biggest thing for me was having them there and having their support. Um, and so I tried to pick, you know, out of the schools, I wanted to be kind of closer to home. Um, that was kind of my, that was one of my things that I really wanted to, if I could, and if it worked out that way, I wanted to play out that way. I mean, from my house in Arizona to here, it's about 11 hour drive. So it's not totally, you know, um, it's not totally unbearable, I guess. So, um, yeah, that was one of my biggest, biggest things. Um, cause I wanted the, all my family to be able to travel and watch you play. So. 11 hours how fast are you driving austin it, it, it takes me 12. i drive uh, uh, <laughs> i think that from my perspective as the parent during the recruiting process um obviously you know we didn't have un we did not have unlimited resources and so we were very strategic uh with the schools that we went and visited obviously the ones that are closest to homes are ones that we can drive to uh that we obviously put some emphasis on Others, obviously, we had to get on airplanes to get to them. Um, but, you know, from my perspective as a dad, um, you know, I, ne I never even asked Austin. I never once told Austin what school I thought he should go to. He had, he had nine offers coming out of high school, and I didn't tell him which one to go to. Uh, I was there on every initial call with the coach when we first meet him just to kind of get a feel for the coach, um, but more as the parent to make sure that, that coaches were not just uh, um, blowing smoke <laughs> at a recruit uh, to keep them honest, I guess. Um, but after that, Austin, you know, he did all the one-on-one -on -one conversations with coaches, uh, you know, each week. And um, and when it came time for visits, I just I think as a parent, we have perspectives that are different than what the, a 17-year-old has uh, because we have more maturity and more life experience. And so I would ask a lot of questions, things that maybe Austin wouldn't consider didn't consider just to make sure that I was helping him extract all of the applicable information he needed to make a choice. So that was sort of my role as a parent in recruiting was making sure we got all the information out of the coaches and we figured out location and you know, what, it's, what it's like there so that he had all the information he needed to make the choice that where he wanted to play football. But it was, it was his choice, not ours. It, it's hard to be objective in those moments. These college coaches, they've got so much power. They really do. They've got influence. They make impact. And I remember walking into Les Miles' office and being really b blown off my feet. I was like, this guy is, he is such a pro and so personable that everything that he's saying, I'm saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, shaking my head up and down. This is the coolest thing. I mean, three years prior to me walking into his office, this guy was you know, holding the national championship and Urban Meyer looking at him, I, dude, that guy was big time, right? I mean, he won two national championships, hot name and, and being able to walk into his office it, on my end, it wasn't very clear. And having dad around, having my grandfather around, my godfather, my uncle, just having family all around me really helped out. So Austin, how did dad help you? Yeah, um, I would say, you know, having him there on the calls, like you mentioned earlier, um, was was huge um, because kind of what kind of um, recap what he said is, um, you know, I wasn't obviously I wasn't even an adult yet. So I didn't really know. I didn't have I didn't really have any experience with it, I guess. And so um, it was helpful to have him there um, to, to ask questions I wouldn't have asked or thought of um, and be able to. I think we got more out of coaches that way. Um, and we got more information and we um, got a lot of just got the vibe that they were that they were given off. And and um, that's helped us kind of eliminate schools as well as uh, pick ones that we really interested in that we can make work to go visit there and go to camps and stuff there. So, um, like I said, yeah, he he was a big help on the calls. And I kind of because like sometimes when you're like you're a younger kid, even like 16, 17, you're talking to a college coach, you know, sometimes it can be a little scary or intimidating. So. Um, having him there is definitely made him a little more comfortable. So, I think one thing more to add to, and Austin, you can you can tell you can uh, give your honest uh, feedback on this part. But uh, 
as a parent, I always felt like it was important for Austin to learn um, how to you know, talk to coaches and how to ask questions. So we would do, I'd force them to, to do some research before a call, you know, where are they located? Who's the coach? Who's the current kicker and punter? You know, what's a question or two, Austin, that you want to ask? Um, I really tried to help as a parent. I wanted Austin to be the captain of his own ship. Um, I was the navigator in the background, um, but I wanted him to learn how to ask questions, um, how to have conversations with, just like you said, James, the less miles of the world, these powerful coaches that you are sort of in awe of, but you can ask good, solid questions. And I know, I know Austin sometimes didn't like me uh, hooking him that way, but hopefully he felt like it ended up to his benefit <laughs> no yeah it really it really did benefit me um because i mean after after a few uh calls um and having that experience and it got really easy for me um and it just got easier and easier every time i did it and and even today if i've talked to our coaches or other coaches or whatever it is coaches the next level it's it's a lot easier to talk to them now because having that experience um and having that practice i guess but yeah like i said i'd have to I'd research some stuff about them, um, the coaches, the program, uh, kind of where they're located, how their school's like, everything like that. And so um, to kind of get a feel um, for these new schools um, that maybe I haven't heard of or talked to as much or even been to. So, yeah, it's definitely helped me. You guys bring up a great point, and it reminds me of like dating, talking to these college coaches and, and really getting to know them and finding out, okay – is this a place for me? If it is, let me find out why. If it's not, let me be able to communicate that, you know, at least to myself, why I should, shouldn't go there. And, you know, Brian, it, it really sounds like you gave Austin the ability to ask the questions, which was really cool because it's kind of hard to let go of control. I mean, here's your kid's future and you kind of let it, let it go. You gave him the opportunity, you gave him the freedom to go out there and figured this out on his own. And I think that's really cool. Well, yeah, these, these young guys, these, you know, they, they, they don't, they don't, they don't, they have never done this before. And so they have to learn <laughs> and, uh, you learn through trial and error and practice. Um, but you know, like in, I, I tried really, like I said, I was on the initial call, but after that, it was just Austin, the coach. I, I wasn't the, the, the parent that was on every single call. You know, and it wasn't, it wasn't about me and the coach. It was about Austin and the coach. And I tried to, you know, I don't know, like I told, I could tell Coach Wells at Texas Tech, we're the kind of parents we're better than not heard, been heard. Uh, you'll see us, but you won't hear from us. So we're just there to support. I'm speaking with Brian McNamara, who is the father of Austin. Again, Austin was a all Big 12 punter, one of the nation's best punters as a true freshman. So you learned so much in the recruiting process, you went to camps, you got the rankings, you got the coaching. What wisdom would you share with a parent who's listening? Yeah. So, um, you know, we, again, we did not have a ton of resources to do tons of camps. So we can be very strategic. Uh, we would only, we'd only go to a couple of camps a year, frankly. Um, you know, Austin's improvement came through weekly training, um, primarily with me in the beginning. Um, as he got better, uh, we found a, a local uh, ex NFL All Pro guy, Mike Vanderjack from the Colts, who lives here locally in Phoenix, uh, to work with Austin, and that proved to be super helpful. Uh, where he would get lessons from Mike, you know, once or twice a month, and in between those lessons, Austin and I would be working on whatever it was that Mike had taught him, you know, in the previous lesson, you know, because we would kick two to three times in total every week. Camp was really helpful. Um, the camps are great for exposure. Um, you know, we talked to 30 something division one coaches during his recruiting process. And, um, every one of them pointed to either one or two of the main camp websites in the rankings list. And Frank, cause you know, we just live in Gilbert, Arizona. No one, no one knows where that is. Uh, but for them to find us, it was because of the camps and the rankings, and those kind of things. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the camps are, are also really good for um, competition uh, as well as how to handle pressure. Remember, uh, you know, Austin can probably speak to this better than I can, but uh, I think he got to the point where Austin had to, had to kick a couple of game winner, game winning field goals in high school in overtime. And I asked him afterwards, were you nervous? He's like, no, because I'm used to so-and-so yelling in my ear at a camp. 
you know, to, to, to earn whatever, some sort of prize, and it became easy for them. Uh, so the camps are great at that because I can't replicate pressure. I can't say, you know, which was just Austin and I in the field by ourselves. Hey, Austin, if you missed this, this one from 40, you know, 50 push, 50 push ups. That wasn't that big of a threat to them. Um, but going to camps definitely helps with uh, um, being able to handle pressure. It uh, helps you prepare for in game kicks. Um, it definitely is the best way to, to have exposure, in my opinion. Um, uh, but you have to be careful because it can be pretty expensive. And finally, the, the, I don't think camps, if you just went to camps and that was it, I don't think you would progress as quickly as a, as a kicker or a punter than if you go to camps here and there, but you have some sort of training, some sort of development on a weekly basis back at home locally, because I think that's where a lot of the progress comes. It's actually in between camps. You go to camps to show off what you've been working on. It sounds like getting better is really the best way to get recruited. Because if you are improving yourself, if you're working on your drop or you're working on your technique or really, let's talk about mindset. If you're actually working on your mindset and learning how to be calm and pressure pressure situations like you talked about, Brian, where you got someone screaming in Austin's ear and now he knows how to deal with that pressure or that distraction so that when he goes into a game, he's out there and he's swinging freely. I, you know, Yes, the parenting perspective, I, I tried really hard to do my best as a dad, um, but it, it can't go without saying, though, that uh, all of the, the success he at Austin had at camps, success he had as a, call, as a high school kicker and punter here in Arizona, the success he's had as a freshman All-American at Texas Tech, it's all because Austin is dedicated. He has, he has got he has a ton of God-given talent, but he, he also works really hard. He, out, he probably outworks his competitors, and it's now paying off. You know, we have a little hashtag between him and I that, you know, hard work pays off. And um, he has been a great example of that, and because of that, he's achieved all the successes and all the recruitment and all the stuff uh, that he's experienced so far. It's, I, just, I just sort of helped guide him along the way, but it's really him who's been working. Austin, this next question might put you on the hot seat a little bit. And if there is no answer, that's fine. But is there anything that comes to mind that you wanted to share earlier or maybe that you, you haven't shared yet? Yeah. Um, so every after every season um, and every year, I just kind of recap. And um, all the accolades and accomplishments and awards are always definitely you know rewarding and for all the hard work that I've tried to put in um, to kicking and punting and and to, uh, to my craft. So, um, seeing that is definitely obviously means everybody it's a, you know, it's a, um, it's really warming, I guess, to be able to receive those. Um, but at the same time, um, I try and put them to the side, acknowledge that, put them to the side, um, and kind of just keep building off of that. Um, that's what I'm trying to do right now in the off season still as we, in the summer and summertime is where I make, usually I make my biggest strides in the summer. Um, and I try and, really focused, trying to get better every day. Um, and whether it's obviously not kicking every day, but doing little stuff, doing drills, stretching, some stuff that we have here at Texas Tech with our strength coaches that do a great job with us here um, as far as, you know, keeping us fresh and, and everything. So I try and learn from them and try and get my body back and rebuild it up. So, um, and then I just try and do it again uh, next season and kind of keep stacking it up. Um, until whenever my time is done and, um, try and my dad, is, we've always talked about, you know, you could be done tomorrow, you know, you never know. And so I try and do everything I can today, um, to try and get better and, you know, try not to regret everything, anything. That's my biggest thing too, is I don't want to regret not doing anything and it hurting me in the season or hurting me whenever. Um, so that's why I try and put the work in, you know, work hard. Um, and then, you know, if the accolades come, it's fine. If they don't, then I'll just keep working and trying to get better. And, and um, yeah, so that's why I try and that's my mindset going into every season, off season and really every day. So, okay. So it is father's day weekend. Is there any kind of funny jokes that you guys have in between each other? Awesome. Right. What, are my four, what, are, awesome. what are my four favorite words? I love to hear from you. You were right, dad. <laughs> 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 Yeah, those four words are applicable to me. So, Dad, whenever you listen to this, you, you were right too. 
Brian and Austin, thanks so much for joining. Y'all's relationship is is a special one, and this segment covered that dynamic that y'all have. And Brian, you and Mrs. McNamara have done an incredible job raising Austin and the kids, and that process is never ending. Austin, thank you for sharing what your recruiting process was like. A lot of guys out here don't have that experience that you do. If you guys found this interesting, the next segment will delve deeper into Austin's technique and his mindset that made him the enemy of punt returners in 2019. I'm James Hairston. This is the Simple Kicking Show. It's a weekly podcast for the kicking and punting community. I visit with kickers and punters, coaches, agents, recruiters, all the above. If this was interesting, follow us on Twitter. We're on Instagram. YouTube, Facebook, and even TikTok. (laughs) I don't even know how to use it. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and until next time. If you enjoyed the content, join the community by subscribing to the Simple Kicking channel below, or drop a like and maybe a comment. It would be really cool to hear from you. Also, you'll find Simple Kicking on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and yes, even TikTok.